everybody, this is Dr. Sattler again with Creating Future Nurses, and today we're going to discuss documentation. I think it's so important that you understand as a nurse how to properly document, because documentation is such a critical part of nursing that we can't forget it. So let's start out with the purpose of documentation. We have a few things um, or a few reasons that we document for. First of all, it provides a written record of the care we provided. If it wasn't written, it wasn't done. So you may have performed a treatment, but if you didn't write it down, then per the documentation, you did not perform that treatment, right? So it provides a written record of the care that we provide for our, our patients. Guide for reimbursement of costs. It helps with reimbursement. So say, for instance, um, Medicare may be paying your facility, let's just throw out a number, $10,000 to treat a person um, with uncontrolled hypertension. You're, nowhere in your documentation does it show that you're actually treating that patient for hypertension. So then Medicare may say, well, why are we paying you to treat this person for hypertension, but your documentation does not show that you're even treating the patient for hypertension. So it shows um, our uh, reimbursers that you know we are providing the care that they are paying for. It's a legal document. So if ever a person decides to bring a suit against you or your organization, your documentation will serve as a legal document in a court of law. And then quality assurance. So every healthcare facility should be doing some type of quality assurance. Quality assurance means you're looking at your processes and seeing what works and what does not work and do we need to put some different policies and procedures in place. So let me give you an example. Maybe I look at the documentation and determine that infections are rising on a particular unit. That documentation can let me know that there's an issue Maybe there's an issue with C. diff starting or some other type of infection. And so then your quality assurance person can um, look at what's going on, why is this problem occurring, and then what types of things do we need to do to correct the situation. So these are going to be your purposes for documentation. So like I said, documentation is a critical part of your nursing practice or your nursing care. So what kind of things are we going to include in our documentation? You're going to include your assessments. Obviously, you know, what assessments of the patient. Um, if I assess a patient and found that um, they had crackles or everything was normal, but I didn't document that, and then something comes along later, and they say, well, you never said that was an issue. But it was, so it's your assessment. The clinical problems, they're clinical problems that they might have. And so it kind of helps us when we look at our clinical problems, are the interventions we're providing for this individual, are they helpful? Do we need to look at other um, things, you know, to try to help our patient? Communication with other healthcare providers. So anytime you talk with anyone else on the healthcare team about your patient, you want to make sure you document that. If you call the doctor with an issue, make sure you document that. What did you tell the doctor? What was the doctor's response to um, what you said? Did they write any orders, you know, based on what you said? You know, so you want to make sure you document. And be specific. Don't just say contacted physician on call. Which physician? So be specific because it may not be your patient's regular physician. So which physician did you talk to? Right? Did you talk to the nurse practitioner? Did you talk to therapy? You know, so anytime you have any type of communication with another health care provider that's providing care for your patient, you want to make sure you document that. And like I said, be specific as to which person you talk to. Your MAR and your TAR, so your medication administration record and your treatment administration record. 
you want to make sure you document. Now remember, you're not going to document until after the medication or treatment is done. You're not going to document before because what if something goes wrong? Maybe that patient refuses the medication or the treatment or something happens and you don't actually give the medication or do the treatment. So you want to make sure you wait until after you perform that treatment or after you give, administer that medication before you document. But you do want to document. Let me give you an example. Say if you um, administered a PRN, as needed medication, and the medication is to be administered every eight hours, right? And so you administer the medication Monday. Tuesday, the nurse comes on shift, um, patient's complaining of pain, you look to see what the patient has ordered. And um, medication doesn't say um, it was ever administered. Doesn't say it was ever administered or whatever. You gave that medication, um, well, let me switch my example around. I gave the medication at uh, 8 a.m. in the morning. And then, um, you know, next nurse comes on, um, maybe somebody's covering you for break or whatever at lunchtime, 12 o'clock. Medication can only be administered every eight hours. You did not document that you gave that medication at 8 a.m. So the nurse looks at it at 12, patient says, I'm in pain, and says, oh, this patient hasn't had this medication since yesterday. So it's okay for me to give the medication now at 12 o'clock, administers the medication, and now we have an overdose because you did not document when uh, you gave that medication at 8 a.m. So it looks like the patient has not had any medication at all. Um, same thing with our treatments. You know, you need to make sure you're documenting your treatments appropriately. The plan of care is always um, documented. Plan of care always needs to be documented. Communication with and education with patients and families. So when you communicate with your patients and their families or you educate them, education um, of various things is ethical and legal. Individuals can sue healthcare facilities or individuals. Be, they have done it, actually have sued and won because they said they had adverse effects to their situation because they were never properly educated on how to administer a med or how to properly perform a treatment or how to properly um, use the equipment. No one ever educated me. If I go back and look at your documentation and you never documented that you actually educated that patient and or their family on it, then yes, that patient uh, and their family can win that case. So you have, even if it's casual um, education, it doesn't have to be a formal education situation. It could be informal. For example, you have a, a diabetic patient. You're helping them up to get to the bathroom and they start to get up and they're gonna walk around without shoes and you educate that patient at that point in time that it's always important to uh, wear shoes when they're ambulating. Even if they're in their own personal environment, they should always wear shoes and then provide that education as to why or what not. Document it. You know, document it. And then you want to document your patient's response to your education, right? If you educate the patient's family, be specific as to who you educated. Don't just say the daughter. What if the patient has five daughters? So be specific as to who you educate um, as well with that, okay? And then the patient's response to outcomes. So what was their response? So we're going back to our patient that's in pain. Um, we identified the patient had an issue with pain. We um, provided the pain medication, the PRN pain medication, or maybe we did a non-pharmacological um, intervention, right? So what was our patient's response? We always want to document our patient's responses to our intervention because we need to know if they're effective or not. If they're not effective, then do we need to contact the physician for something else that can be more effective? So always document your patient's response. And so these are just some key points in documentation I want to point out when you're documenting. 
You want to make sure your documentation is accurate, um, unambiguous. There should be no um, ambiguity. Did you mean this or did you mean that? Be clear in your documentation. It should not be unambiguous. For example, don't just write BS normal. Do you mean, you know, a person could look at that, oh, they're saying the blood sugar is normal, but somebody else might look at it and say, oh, no, they're saying the bowel sounds are normal. And don't just use the word normal. Be clear. So if we're talking about bowel sounds, say bowel sounds positive on, in all four quadrants. Don't use the word normal. Be clear in what it is you're saying. Um, your spelling should be correct. If your spelling is incorrect, a lawyer could look at your documentation and say, this nurse doesn't even know how to spell appropriately. How do we know she is taking care of this patient appropriately? Right? Legible. So I know a lot of our documentation now is um, computerized, but if you're at a facility and you ever have to do anything handwritten, make sure it's legible. It needs to be legible. Because, like I said, it's a legal document, and if it, if it comes to a situation where it has to go to court, you want to make sure people understand what it was you were trying to say, and not thinking you may be just trying to make something up at the time of the, um, the court hearing. Um, do not use forbidden abbreviations. The Joint Commission has published some forbidden abbreviations that should not be used because there was so much confusion and mistakes happening with certain abbreviations. And so they put out a list of forbidden abbreviations that should not be used in documentation. And they should be written out. For example, instead of saying QD, you should be writing daily or every day. Or QOD, you should be writing every other day. So make sure you understand and know what those forbidden abbreviations are um, prior to documenting. You want it to be brief. You're not writing a book, although you're going to be clear, but brief. Only write facts. Keep your opinions out of it. So that means you should not be using words such as seems like, appears to be, looks like, you shouldn't be using any of those type words. You want to um, only use the facts. Describe exactly what it is you see. If we're talking about a wound, don't say, looks better than yesterday. What does that mean? Describe exactly what it looks like. If you're measuring, what are your measurements? What does the wound bed look like? What does the peri wound look like? What is the drainage? Is there odor to the drainage? Be clear in your documentation. Keep your opinions out of it, okay? There should, like I said, there should be no ambiguity in what you mean when you're documenting, okay? So that wraps up our uh, segment on documentation. So if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more like it, then please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel at Creating Future Nurses. Thank you all and have a great day.